Today, I'm gonna to show you the amazing power of focus area selections in Photoshop CC 2014. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nason. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. We got a great episode for you guys today. It's all about something called focus area selections. And if you're watching this and you've been using Photoshop for a while and you didn't watch the new release updates, you'll say, that doesn't exist in Photoshop, but it does because they had it, <laughs> but it does. They added it with the latest release of Photoshop CC, which is Photoshop CC 2014. So this video is gonna show you guys some great new tools that they just added to Photoshop CC 2014. We're gonna be using the focus area select. I'm gonna show you some really cool things you can do with the type tool. And I'm even gonna bring in an old favorite of mine, content aware scale. And we're gonna use all those things and bring them up together to create an amazing swimwear ad. This episode's gonna be nonstop, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, so the image we're using today is our image from our latest Flurn Pro Tutorial Swimwear Retouching, which is actually on sale right now. That's a little plug for you, but it's a really cool image and we can use all of our new tools from Photoshop CC to create an amazing ad out of this image. The first thing I wanna do, I don't think it's wide enough. I think we need a little bit more space because I wanna add some type to this. So what I'm gonna do is grab my crop tool. I'm just gonna click on my image. It's gonna give me these little borders here. And most people think of the crop tool they think of cropping in, like making an image smaller, but you can actually crop out. You can give yourself more space as well. So we're just gonna take these arrows and just pull out and give our space self a little bit more space on both the left and the right of this image. I wanna make sure this delete crop pixels is not checked. That way, if I happen to have, you know, something cropping into my image and it's, you know, I, I don't wanna to delete those permanently. I wanna be able to get those back if I need to. So we keep that unchecked and hit this checkbox right up there at the top. Okay. Now we're going to actually extend this frame using one of my favorite tools in Photoshop. It's called Content Aware Scale. So to do that, I'm gonna create a duplicate of my background layer because I don't like messing with my background layer. So hit Command J and we've got Swimwear, copy now. Okay, next we're going to go to Edit and I'm going to go down to Content Aware Scale. So Content Aware Scale. Now, what we're gonna do, it basically looks the same as like a regular scale, but there's some options here that I really like. You can say Protect and if you had something selected, like in a channel selection, you could actually pull up a channel selection, or you can just hit this guy, which says protect skin tones. It looks like a little, just a little dude up there hanging out and uh, protecting his skin tones. This basically means it's gonna stretch this image out, it's gonna recreate a lot of pixels for us, but it's gonna leave our person alone, which is really, really nice. So basically I'm just gonna click here and start pulling this out, and I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, and it's gonna pull it out in both directions at the same time. There we go, all the way to the edge there and it even pulled out a little bit more than we needed to. There we go, really, really cool. So let's hit this checkbox up there and you can see here's, I hit Command Z to show you the before and the after. It did move our subject a little bit, but what you can see is it kind of takes our pixels in the background and just kind of stretches them and pulls them apart, but it leaves our subject alone. A super cool tool when you need to stretch your background. And I, this is a bit of an extreme, guys. Normally I wouldn't stretch it this much, but you can see just how much you can stretch a background and still have it look really good. This is an amazing tool in Photoshop. It's gonna work the best when you have a clean background, just like we have here. All right, now well, let's make a selection and add some type to this image. So one of the latest features Photoshop just released is this focus area select. And I gotta tell you, it's awesome. It works way better than I thought it would. And but here's the idea behind it. It figures out what's in focus and allows you to just select that out. And you have a lot of really cool features in there to like bring the focal depth in or out. So super easy to do. We're just gonna go to select and I'm gonna go down to focus area. There we go. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna start thinking on our image and say, try to figure out what's in focus. And they're gonna eventually figure out that, yeah, my subject's in focus. And then everything that's not in focus is going to be knocked out. Okay, now there are some things. I would recommend having the advanced selection added. So you can actually click on the advanced mode there where you can choose things like your image noise level. And I'm gonna bring this way, way down. The lower you bring your image noise level, the more it says like, okay, because what it's look, basically looking for are things that don't have a lot of detail, right? So if you have noise, then it's gonna take things like her stomach and her leg and say, okay, those are out of focus, right? But basically by lowering this down to something like 0 .0004, we're good to go. That's gonna get us more of our subject actually in focus because we don't have a lot of grain in this image. 
Okay, and then it's up to you kind of playing around with this in focus range to kind of figure out what you're doing. Now you can output this however you want. Selection, layer masks, things like that onto a new document. We're just going to use a selection because I know that when I create a selection, I can use that just about any way that I want to. So we're going to use a selection. And you can even go into the Refine Edge dialog straight from this tool, which I think is amazingly perfect. All right, so I already played around, and I know the value that's going to work for this one. It's going to be 1.36 works really well for this. All right, 1.36, and there we go. We can see we've got a nice area selected out, se selected out, and we've got basically everything we need there. All right, you can hit this soften edge. It's just going to make things a little bit nicer. All right, let's see if I can bring that up to 1.37. Just kind of like includes more things. The more you, the more you click up. All right, there we go. Little bit down, so we're not including our background. All right, and somewhere right about there. There we go. That looks pretty dang good. So we're going to hit OK, and this is basically just going to turn into a selection now. So now we were able to focus just on our subject there, and it just takes the background and puts it out of focus. So if you guys are curious on like what that actually looks like, well, if I have my subject selected, let's say I grab a brush tool and I paint with red for no apparent reason, I can now paint and it's just going to be on our subject. Now, if you want the opposite selected, all you have to do is hit Shift Command I or go to Select Invert, and then your background is selected, which is what we're going to do in this case. Okay, we're going to select our background. So now that the background's selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer mask out of that. Now, layer masks can be used on regular layers. They can also be used on groups. And I'm going to put a couple different pieces of type in a group. Okay, so I want these things to be behind our subject. So it, I know that I want to put them all in a group. So it, instead of putting individual layer masks on all the layers, I'm just going to put a layer mask on the group, and that way each of the layers will know that it's supposed to be behind our subject or hidden where our subject is. Okay, so we're going to hit, hit Command G to group that, and then I'm going to click on my layer mask button. And you can see here on my layer mask for the group is, looks just like this. This is everything is going to be visible except where our subject is. So if I got just painted on this layer with no selections active right now, I can paint and it's just going to show up behind our subject because that is where our group layer mask exists. Okay, so now it's time to show you some of the really cool type tools I added in Photoshop and we're going to stick them in this image to make it into an ad. So we want to go ahead and select inside of our group, and we're going to use the type tool. So we're going to hit T for the type tool, and I'm just going to click anywhere on our image. It really doesn't matter because you can move this after the fact. There we go. We're going to click right there, and I'm going to change my color. We're going to change this to white. There we go. Looking OK. And I'm just going to type in swim. There we go. That looks pretty good. And we're going to hit Enter. Now I'm going to hit Command J to make a duplicate copy of that. I'm going to bring this down. There we go, and we're going to double click on this and call this 2014. OK, so swim 2014. Now we can kind of play around and see what we're going to do with these types. So I'm going to go into our type tool, and let's see, here on swim, I'm just going to make that quite a bit larger. OK, and you can see I actually have these letters spaced apart. There we go. That's at a negative 100 right now, which is the spacing in between each of these letters, called the tracking. OK, if I put that back to 0, they're going to be spaced a little bit further apart, each of the letters. So let's try bringing this down to like a negative 25. There we go. OK, so we have swim, and there we, we can see the new snapping tools in Photoshop working pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and turn those off for the time being. There we go. But we can see, because these are in the group, basically what they're doing is they're showing up behind our subject now. So we have swim, and it's showing up behind our subject. OK, so there we go. Swim, and then we're going to get 2014. And I'm going to bring this right under there as well. Very cool. So we have that kind of like nested behavior. All right, now we're going to create a new layer. I'm just going to create a selection here. I'm going to hit Shift Delete, and we're going to fill this with, let's see, let's just fill this with white. And I'm going to hit the down arrow a couple times and then hit the Delete key. So that way I've just got a nice horizontal line there. All right, cool. It looks like we selected a little bit of our arm. No big deal. Just go in with your eraser tool and erase that away. All right, so we've got swim 2014 selected behind our subject. Um, the next thing we're going to do, I'm actually going to use our Flurn logo. Duh. We're going to go ahead and just grab this from a document, use our move tool, and shift click and drag this over here. I'm going to make it like the that's the name of this bikini or whatever. You know, the, it's the Flurn. 
All right, so there we go. Flurn, and then let's just copy. I'm going to hit Command J on this 2014, and I'm going to. That's so cool how it goes right behind our subject. We're just going to come up with a price. So we'll just call this. This is 24.99. All right, there we go. 24.99, and I think I want to. Let's hit Command T, and we're going to just bring that down a little bit because I I want this to kind of go behind our subject a little bit, but not too much. All right, there we go, and this is our Flurn. Now, really cool, I can just shift click on both, let's just call this Flurn, so we know what we're working with here. I can sh hold down shift and click on the two of these, and then I can hit my move tool and align them to the right, so they're gonna be perfect. If I wanted to center align them, I could do that too. If I wanted to left align them, that's right over here, but this time I'm gonna align them to on the right. All right, there we go, and this is our ad. Swim 2014. Flurn, the Flurn suit <laughs> is $24.99. Really, really cool. And you can see our selections worked very easily. We were able to select out our subject using that really amazing focus select. And then we just added the type right there in there. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you, and this is with type. Another one of the additions to Photoshop CC 2014 is their awesome new type tool. I'm going to hit T for the type tool. Let's go ahead and click on our, let's just go to swim. There we go. We'll pull this to the right there. And now they've added, this is really cool. It's actually going to be a live preview. Let's just bring that over there. It's going to be a live preview of anything that I hover over. Let's pull it a little bit more to the right so we can see. Anything that I hover over is going to be a live preview. So before it took a lot of work to kind of like figure out if this was the right type for you. Now you just kind of grab your new Adobe type kit, which is also new in Photoshop CC 2014 and you just kind of scroll down and you get to the type you like and you hit enter and that's all it is. So I know for some of you guys, it's like, that's not a big deal, but those of you guys who have been using Photoshop for a long time, like I have and choosing your type was always been a pain in the butt. Now they've made it really, really simple and we're, um, I'm at least really happy about this. <laughs> so we're gonna go with the original type and that's it. So this is our swimwear ad, 2014, the Flurn suit for $24.99. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you want to stay in tune with some of the new updates to Photoshop CC 2014, just subscribe to, well, just click on the screen now. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave us a comment right down below if there's anything you'd like to learn about in Photoshop. We'd be more than happy to make those episodes. And also, be sure to share this with your friends and your family, and even your dentist, because you know what? Dentists are people too, and some of them are interested in photography. So the next time you're at the dentist, Remember, Flurn.com. <laughs> I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Forget you, dentist. You're not coming to my party. The, the sad life of dentists. Who invited the dentist? <laughs> oh.